The Byte 3 is the latest in the line of mini fanless PCs from US-based manufacturer Azul. It's available now for around $200 at the time of recording. Hi, I'm James Bruce. You're watching MakeUseOf.com Reviews. And this little black box here is the Azul Byte 3 powering this Windows 10 Pro 64-bit desktop that you can see running behind me. It features the Intel N3450 CPU with HD 500 graphics and 4GB of RAM. There's three USB 3, one USB 2 and one USB-C port. Video out comes in the form of HDMI and VGA. There's a 3.5mm audio out and the connectivity is provided by Bluetooth 4.0, AC Wi-Fi and Gigabit Ethernet. Now there's only 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage internally, but there's also an SD card slot and an M2 SSD slot for expansion. Inside the box you'll find the Byte 3 itself, the power adapter, and this sleek black remote. And that's it. Everything else is a case of bring your own. You'll need your own monitor or TV, and for setup at least you'll need a keyboard and a mouse. Though later on, once you've got your favorite apps or media players installed, you can pretty much just use the included remote. However, unlike some other media remotes, this doesn't have an emulated mouse gesture system. It's just got the D-pad and some other buttons. For instance, you've got a hamburger button that opens the start menu. You've got a D-pad, left-click button in the middle, a back button, which seems to actually close applications, a tab button, volume, mute, and settings. It does feel a bit mismatched at times, like if you want to go back in Plex and you press the button that plainly looks like back, it actually closes the whole application down, which is a bit weird until you get used to it. Also, the D-pad doesn't let you hold it down in order to continuously scroll. You have to keep pressing it. Mostly then, it's fine as a media remote, but you're certainly not going to use it for general computing or anything. You couldn't do any web browsing with this. As for raw power and performance, the numbers I got from Geekbench are a little bit less than what I'd expect for this CPU, the N3450. The numbers were actually a couple of hundred lower than the identically specced Chewy 14 lapbook that I reviewed about six months ago now. Still, they're not so different as to be very concerning, and considering it's such a tiny fanless device, it's still pretty good performance numbers. Now don't get me wrong, you're not going to be playing native 3D games on this or really running Photoshop and video editing. Of course you're not. That's not what it's designed for. So in terms of actual user experience, I've been testing it out in the kitchen as a kind of media center PC and general browsing thing. So it's been streaming news over the internet in a web browser, as well as running movies and TV shows through Plex. And I also tested it out with some in-home game streaming through Steam from a more powerful gaming PC down here over the network. And to be honest, not once did it feel particularly sluggish at all. It handled all of those tasks really well. Gameplay through Steam in-home streaming was a little bit choppy at times, but I could put that down to the Wi-Fi performance, to be honest. The Wi-Fi in my house isn't that great. Thankfully, there's a gigabit Ethernet port on the back, so you can plug it in directly over Ethernet if you're able to do that. And I would always recommend plugging in Ethernet when you can. Keep the Wi-Fi for devices that just don't have another option, like tablets and phones. Now, I'm not going to pretend this could run anything seriously heavy like Photoshop or video editing or even any kind of native 3D gaming. You can do some casual gaming just fine, but nothing too heavy. But as a slim media client, as something for streaming, it works really well. In fact, in today's computing environment where pretty much everything is done in the cloud, in a web browser, it doesn't really matter how powerful your computer is. Ultimately, it's all going to be done in the web browser. And for most people's general computing needs, something like this is going to be more than sufficient. What I really liked about this is that it's fast to start up and resume from hibernation, as well as to open up apps. So if my dinner was ready and I wanted to throw some TV on through Plex, I didn't have to wait too long. Everything booted up quickly and I could throw something on the TV. It's responsive and it runs the full version of Windows, so there's no messing around with having to root your device or sideload because Amazon Fire OS doesn't have your particular favorite app on the App Store. So should you buy the Azul Byte 3? Well, at $200, I think the price is right, especially considering that it's from a US manufacturer, so the support is really going to be there. 
unlike a lot of the Chinese imports that you can see, where support is basically non-existent. If you do have a specific need for something that will run Windows but isn't maybe, you know, too powerful, then this is definitely a great option. It'll function great as a media player, especially good for in-home Steam streaming. And there's always that familiar Windows interface behind it. So it's adaptable and can do a lot of other things too. However, do consider what your use case really is because there might be better solutions or cheaper solutions for you if it isn't filling your one particular niche. Just for slinging videos from YouTube, for example, from your phone, it might be easier just to get a Chromecast, especially if you're already in the Google ecosystem and you have, say, a Google Home, which you can then control the Chromecast via your voice. Or consider a small media center PC, which might be a bit more expensive, but will ultimately be more upgradable if you need a lot more power localized on that device. Or for more general web browsing and portability, you might prefer a tablet, which of course you can get a pretty good one for around $200. So again, great device, but there may be better options for you. Do consider exactly what you need it for. Thanks for watching and to be in with a chance of winning this Azul Byte mini PC, head on over to makeuseof.com slash giveaways or click the link in the description for a direct link to this review. To show your appreciation, please hit like. I know it doesn't seem like much, but just hitting like means that our video will be displayed in the search results more than other people's, which we really appreciate. And if you haven't already, please subscribe so you'll be the first to know about our weekly competitions, giveaways, technology tips, and DIY tech tutorials from all of us at makeuseof.com. Until next time.